YouTube. Today we're gonna be talking about meltdowns and shutdowns. It's gonna be kind of hard to share this with you guys, but I feel like we're ready. So basically what this video is gonna have in it um, is just like a short kind of explanation of autistic shutdowns and meltdowns, and then also sort of how I deal with it. Almost a month ago, I had a really bad meltdown. I decided to record it. Now this was not something that was an original idea. It was actually a YouTuber that I watch. She did the same thing. I'm just gonna give her credit uh, for being so brave for doing this. And I kind of decided like when I first saw that and I saw it over a year ago, um, I definitely kind of felt like, wow, like I wanna do something like this. Like I wanna talk about my experiences and I wanna be open about uh, what I've experienced. So I just wanna say um, this video is definitely um, one of those like kind of like where it's fairly personal. Um, and I also follow some people on Instagram who are very open it's time. Like, I've been doing this for over a year now, and there's almost a thousand of you guys, which I'm really excited about. So I said, why not, you know? So let's talk about it. I'm gonna get closer, okay? Now, autistic meltdowns and shutdowns kind of sound a little bit confusing at first. With a shutdown, you are having this inability to kind of speak, express yourself, basically just shut down. I lose my appetite and I will only eat original baked plays until the time passes. I also don't wanna to talk to anyone. I'm capable of talking, but it takes so much energy that I don't wanna do it. Um, sometimes I am more sensory seeking. I tend to be more sensory seeking than avoiding in a shutdown. I've noticed, and this is just me. This is a natural part of being autistic. Um, we all have shutdowns at least, and we all have meltdowns as far as I'm like aware. Um, I'm gonna just go on and assume that we've all kind of had something similar. With a meltdown, this is way more, um, this is a lot more involved with other people a lot of the time. It kind of starts out, like I've noticed, is just overstimulation and it doesn't really matter what it is. And usually I have some sort of shutdown before the meltdown. If it doesn't end, I will usually go into a full meltdown. So with a meltdown, you will typically see anger. Beyond anger would be rage, yelling, screaming, shrieking, some physical element as well. So like if someone tries to touch you, you might push them off. You don't want to be touched even if you don't uh, react, you know, you don't want to be touched. So in that situation, I'm more sensory avoiding. Uh, the last thing I want is any sort of sensory input and I actually become very sensitive to uh, my hands, my body, everything. And I just want to kind of get out of my skin. It's really uncomfortable. And I usually feel pretty trapped, um, especially if I am actually physically trapped. I had a meltdown in the car with my father because he was doing some stuff and he, if he watches this, he's gonna know what he was doing. Uh, he was getting on my nerves and I say that respectfully, but he was, and he knows that he knows that he was. He knows that he went a little bit too far. Uh, and I asked him to stop talking and I asked like three or four times and he didn't. And by then I had like snapped. I had just completely snapped and had a full, meltdown and just exploded and if if anyone had touched me like anyone like calm down anything like that it would have just made it worse so that's kind of how a meltdown is what makes that different from a regular meltdown if a neurotypical is having a meltdown um which you know the term is specific to autism but um, it's used a lot just as a term, I guess, outside of autism for having a breakdown, basically. Someone who is holistic might kind of just be like really overwhelmed. They're going on, like there's this stuff going on at home, there's stuff going on at work, they're in their car, there's traffic. You know, there's this one thing that happens and it just breaks, like they just break down and they might burst into tears or something. And I've seen that like in a typical population, that's why people have nervous breakdowns or meltdowns, meltdowns. It's usually something that builds up within them and then they finally break. For autistic people, it actually it happens, it happens a lot more often for autistic people, I believe. And then also if you have something like depression, it might happen more often. It happens more often in people who are just you're just more inclined to get overstimulated or to get stressed out. And we have a lot of stress in our lives um, as autistic people. So I'm just gonna say some reasons that they could happen. Um, it may not be that for the past few weeks we've been tired and we finally broke down. We could be completely fine and someone's yelling too loud and it doesn't stop and we could have a meltdown or shutdown. It's not necessarily like the way that someone who is holistic might respond to their stressors. It's just kind of like, 
Aniva's fine, Aniva's happy, and then in five minutes there's this stimulus that hasn't been removed and I just lose it. But with shutdowns, I have them when I have been overly social. Why do they happen? Number one is it's not handling situations well, any situation. And it's not so much that the situation went badly, it's that you feel like the situation wasn't handled properly by you. And it, like I said, could be anything, could be I said the wrong thing, could be I did the wrong thing, I broke this when I wasn't supposed to and it was uncomfortable. Next thing is embarrassment. And this definitely goes into the last thing I said. Getting embarrassed really takes more of a toll on me than I think a typical person. And I had to teach myself how to laugh things off. Um, and I think, you know, everyone kind of has that experience. I fell off my bike at school one day and it was embarrassing. I was able to laugh it off, but then I had lost complete sense of where my body was. And so I didn't know like, how should I be holding my face? Should I be smiling right now? Should my face be straight? Should I look irritated? It's just like this whole thing. And so embarrassment can cause that sort of shutdown. And so that afternoon it was just a long day and it was time for me to be silent and be in a silent environment the next reason is over time building up and this is what I just explained so there you go <laughs> I feel like I explained all this and now I just have to go through the dividers is this a review session or what I don't know not fixing relationships this one is a big deal because the relationship the relationships in your life influence your life so much more than just you yourself. I mean, you influence, you influence your life too, but your relationships with people influence your life. A romantic relationship, if it's not going very well, we all know that it can, it can definitely affect every other part of your life. You know, maybe it's your relationship with your mom or your dad. Now we're gonna talk about how to recover. So I'm gonna show you guys a few clips, of course. What I did in the videos was I was very overwhelmed and this was, this was a meltdown that was caused by emotions and also the regular stresses of life, the stress of life, I don't know. And I realized when I got home, I could not feel anything. And I've talked about that whole thing. I am actually having a very hard time recording this because I don't feel like talking at all. I need to just sit in my room and just not move for a day. I know that being autistic, the feelings that I feel get delayed. All of those emotions that I didn't display or that I didn't feel fully, it's all right here right now. And it's just this mixture of emotions and my body just wants to it, just get it all out. And it's just this numb feeling. I could not make any facial expressions. I had my headphones, my favorite headphones. I gave them to my boyfriend. Um, so that he can enjoy them because they're really wonderful. The main thing for me is the pressure on the ears. I really love having that pressure there. I just like sat there trying to feel something. And because I couldn't feel anything, I was trying to figure out, you know, like, I know I'm not happy, so what am I? So I put my headphones on and I used my tube. It's like a lava lamp, but it's got water and beads in it. So it just looks like a tornado swirler. And I try to keep my floor clean, like vacuumed every week. I regulate my temperature using either my heater or my fan. And I lay on the floor and I wrap my body up inside the blanket. I don't have a weighted blanket. So this is what I do instead. I just like cocoon myself, which is something my brother taught me when we were kids. And it adds like pressure and tension. And so that's what I do. I have this remote that goes to my skylight. It is a ceiling projector, goodness gracious. And so it has like waves on your ceiling. And so that's on the ceiling. And then I also have my lights, which you can see here on the other side of my room. So I have my headphones on listening to music. I have the lighting right. I have my tube and I just stare into the tube. And I know like it really helped. And then I also was able to do some stimming. So you guys will see that um, like sort of bobbing and usually I'll either tighten or flex my hands. The other things that I do, I make sure that no one's gonna bother me. I do this like when I'm at home and like no one's gonna talk to me or whatever. You know, if you don't wanna listen to headphones, have your headphones and you can use earplugs and sit in silence. I also have remotes um, and then my phone, I have my Bluetooth lights, I can turn them on and off. I use my iPad when I'm listening to music because it's less like, I'm not gonna get as many text messages and stuff. I put my phone on do not disturb and I get off of the internet. Um, and those things really help me. So, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, um, kind of had everything popping up over here. Um, so yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I really cannot describe how much your support means to me. Um, especially not right now cause I don't feel like using my face, but, um, you guys really mean a lot and we are literally right at 900 subscribers. 
900 like and I honestly cannot believe it I can't believe that I'm doing this I really can't um it just kind of hits me sometimes like oh my oh my god like I actually I actually have like 900 people that are interested in the things that I'm saying and like relate that's a lot of people I hope that this video was helpful I hope that it was educational I hope it was uh fascinating and I hope that you guys will also feel comfortable enough to talk about your experience as well uh with meltdowns and shutdowns and like any advice that you have not gonna lie I'm hungry again and the one food that I want to eat I don't have yeah thank you guys so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed this video I'm I'm like I actually am happy but I actually cannot use my face right now so um yeah thank you guys so much for watching and bye